Hi Jody. thanks for joining me this morning. Hello. <laughs> Hi, so can you um, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your involvement with creative arts? Yeah, so my name is Jodie Nicholson. I'm a singer, songwriter and musician from Homes on Teats. Um, I've been involved with music since around the age of 15 when I started doing open mics. Um, and yes, yeah, since then, it's kind of progressed. I released my debut album, Golden Hour, in 2019. Um, and since, since then, really, I've kind of, it's evolved into a whole world of its own. And I'm now doing this. Um, it's like my main kind of thing. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you and, you know, two million of us um, who make our living through the creative arts that uh, seems to get a little overlooked. Um, so what happened when you were 15? How come? I mean, did you come from a creative background? What what catalyzed you into into what you're doing? Um, I think I've been very creative from a young age. Um, anything that involved like painting, getting messy, all that good stuff. Um, I'm a very creative being. Um, but in terms of music, um, so my parents are both pretty musical. They played in club bands before I came along and then I kind of stopped that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're both very musical and it's just always been around the house, you know, having albums on the kitchen, watching live videos. Um, and yeah, when I was around 15, um, my dad took me to an open mic night at the Quaker house in Darlington and I totally wasn't old enough to be there. Um, but yeah, I went and it became something we did like every fortnight. And yeah, so now I just kind of started performing there and I only played covers. It was, I don't know, I didn't really do, I didn't really write any of my own music then. Um, and I started playing in pubs, just in a local area. Um, and through word of mouth, I've then progressed to things like bars, restaurants, the odd wedding. Um, and I did that throughout education uh, up until even like throughout university, I was still coming home on the weekends and squeezing the odd gig in, you know? Um, so yeah, that, that kind of was how I, Kind of got into it and started doing things really brilliant so um so you didn't study music formally um how did you learn like um how did you learn your craft mm -hmm. um, I know these days it's you know um like so i used to ask are you self-taught but actually it's like with youtube and with what you know listening to other people play that actually isn't being self-taught that just means that it's outside the formally accepted way of learning music that's so true, it's such a good point. Um, so I had a very kind of brief education in music. Um, for example, I did keyboard lessons when I was in primary school and I didn't even get to do, I, well, I didn't even do like a grade one exam, but that gave me a basic idea of chords and structuring a song and all that jazz. Um, and I had singing lessons for a couple of years when I was about 14, 15. Um, none of which I probably use now. Um, <laughs> um, but in terms of actually playing my own music and, and how that kind of started. Um, so my dad taught me like very basic stuff on guitar when I was about 14. Um, and then I would say I am primarily self-taught. I, I don't read music. I've never really been able to understand how to read music or given it the time. Um, so the way that I really learned was just by trying to learn to play songs that I love listening to. So I'd have a bunch of tabs up and trying different songs by different artists, playing the chords. And um, that, was, that was really how I learned guitar and understood um, things like open tunings, which opened up like a whole new world to me and I use them all the time. Um, and also, in terms of playing keys, I think that that was like my first instrument. We've, we've always had a piano in the house. And um, if I heard a song on the radio or I listened to albums a lot, um, 
I just try and work everything out by ear and use my voice as like the main instrument and then think, oh, well, what note is that? And try and find it and work out the chords around it. So that, yeah, I would kind of say I'm mostly self-taught. Um, and obviously there is the odd like YouTube video thrown in there as things kind of progressed and um, yeah, more and more people sharing things to help other musicians and, and spread different stuff. But yeah, that, that's kind of how it happened. Brilliant. So um, when and why did you make the transition to writing your own music? Um, a lot of it kind of came from being inspired by watching other musicians. Um, when I was, I don't know how old I might have been, maybe about 15, 16, 17, um, my, my dad took me to see this amazing musician that he just raved about. He's called Paul Adal, he's based in Sunderland, and he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal guitarist, vocalist, musician in his own right. Um, and he's really honed his craft and he played across loads of different pubs, he even went and did like a tour in Germany and it was just like incredible to watch him play live. Um, but watching him perform a whole set of his own music and maybe like the odd cover thrown in there, that really inspired me to start writing my own music because it's just so much more powerful than maybe playing a cover, which is all that I was doing. Um, and yeah talking to him and and all that jazz like I don't know I just felt like I was at a point where I could start experimenting a bit more um, yeah, yeah that's that's kind of how it happened really and and what's your process how do you go about it does it start with the, the music a few chords or the lyrics come first um it's varied over the years um I used to be quite lyric based first um but now it, they kind of all happen, happen simultaneously. Um, it's a very intuitive and organic process for me um, because it often just comes from things that are happening at the moment, um, how I'm feeling about certain situations or um, something that I'm just trying to process in my mind. And I do that a lot through music. It's quite cathartic in that way. Um, so yeah, the, the way that I tend to write songs really is um, I, I sit down with, with an instrument and I just play a few kind of chord sequences, loop it around, get a real feel for it. And then like, I just start singing to it and it's, it's kind of mindless. It's just a pure stream of consciousness, what comes out. Um, and often I'll have maybe a hook or something that feels really good, feels really comfortable. And I kind of loop around that and use that as a basis for then the rest of the song. So a lyric form from that. And then I think, okay, how can this story develop? Um, or whatnot, you know, it, Brilliant. it kind of wants through there. That kind of leads me into the next question, which is kind of the why, you know, why dedicate your life to music and, and what is music, you know, and all the things that it does, you know, the, the effect that it has on people with dementia, on people with Tourette's, um, you know, the, the idea, you know, it's, uh, it did humanity, was there human consciousness before there was music? Like, why do we do it? Why do you do it? And what part do you think it plays in society more generally? Um, music has a really beautiful way of connecting with people that so many, I don't think many things can really replace that. Um, because I mean, for example, you can listen to something that's in a completely different language and you don't really understand what the lyrics are, what they mean, but you still feel the song and it still touches you in some way. Like, I love how music has the power to do that. Um, I think the reason why I do it, um, I don't know whether I've ever really nailed that down, but I love the atmosphere in the room when you're playing to people um, or seeing people live. Um, it's always kind of been stemmed in, in that like exchange that you have with, with other people um, and how you can share that experience with them. Um, and also it's, it's just, knowing that you, you have a voice um, 
and really finding yourself and, and who you are through music. Um, I don't think I really, um, I think I underestimated a lot how impactful it would actually be just on me finding out who I am and how I maybe process things. Um, yeah, I think in terms of how it impacts like society, it's, it's an amazing way of people, you know, people can listen to, to lyrics in a song and they realize they're not alone in something, which I think is so, so amazing. Um, like we're all connected through this art form and it's just great. Like, yeah, yeah. nothing can really replace that. I mean, I definitely feel it's been a major um, part in, particularly when I was um, sort of a young teenager on, you know, just keeping the ear on the planet, really, um, being able to resonate and know that there were other people out there that, you know, uh, felt the same. And uh, yeah, that was really important. Um, so I'm going to have to ask the lockdown question, but I'm going to ask it slightly more generally. Where do you see things? I mean, obviously you probably had a roadmap in place before all this happened and that's been affected, but where do you want to go? Like, do you want to be like, in my day, it would have been top of the pops famous. Um, where do you want your career to go? And how's lockdown impacted upon that? And are you laying plans for gigs and, and a way out of this yet? Or are you, I guess you probably tried to and were scuppered. Are you brave enough to try it again? Um, there is always a bit of a skeptic in me of, you know, we're planning these things, we're getting dates in the diary, but are they still gonna happen? Like, who knows? Um, I think we've kind of learned not to really take things for granted. Um, during this time especially um lockdown has been really surprising in so many ways um and probably my busiest time and i never really anticipated that um at the beginning of lockdown last year i think it was around may i received news um that i was awarded two grants um to go towards projects both different projects um one was to go towards um a single called Mew, which I released last summer. No, September. Yeah, I think it's been in all our heads since then. <laughs> um, and that was that was supported by Help Musicians Do It Differently. And I'm only just touching on the second one now, which is PRS Foundations Women Make Music. Um, and they've really sustained me throughout the whole of lockdown. I could not be more grateful for the opportunities that's given me um, to really push myself creatively and had just having that backing and somebody a complete stranger to you well strangers because there's a panel of people that obviously choose who the awardees are going to be um just knowing that people really believe in these little demos that you send um of music and ideas that you have um and the projects you propose it it means a heck of a lot so yeah that that's really um sustained me and move has gone on to do wondrous things that I never really believed it would um obviously you can think like yeah this is a great song it feels really good to me but you don't know how people are going to receive it so to get it on things like best of introducing on radio one at the end of the year and six music have given it a number of spins um there's there's so many things that that that's done um, and it's still making waves now which is really cool like so many months on um yeah it's it's been a bit of a wild ride but <laughs> yeah I mean I think we're all um I think the reason why moves going around around our heads this long is we're all waiting for an opportunity to get out there and dance to it together um and so you know I think I kind of my hope is that if nothing else then outdoors this year maybe you know tiny tiny little baby festivals 50 or 100 people yeah. all sort of socially distanced camping hopefully at least that can happen because for me that's enough you know I don't need to go to Glastonbury I just want to be in a in a large field with a small amount of people and a decent sound system and <laughs> I'll be happy Probably. and the thing is as well like there's there've been so many live streams and that has been a really nice way to still connect with people and play your music and and share that that experience but nothing will ever be being in the same vicinity as other people 
and hearing that music live. Um, and to kind of touch back on your question, which I realised I didn't even cover, um, in terms of like how I see my career developing, um, especially kind of considering <laughs> the current climate and all that jazz, um, I think lockdown has really taught me like the beauty of collaboration. Um, and I would really love to just songwrite with more people. Um, it's something that I've really loved doing over the last year. And um, as an artist, just really try and hone my craft and understand more who I am as an artist. Um, there have been like a few things that I've been involved with recently um, in collaboration with Noisy Daughters and Tease Music Alliance, where you're there helping other people. And I really, really love that aspect of things, which I'd really, be interested in, in doing more. Um, I'm like a big advocate of, you know, the underdog and, and helping people who kind of are in or were in like a similar position to how I started out. Um, so looking like really far into the future, like I'd love to get to a point where I could really make an impact and either mentor people or, you know, kind of use that knowledge and experience that I've gained over the years um, and support people in this scene because I think it's an amazing scene to be part of and any way that I can help people like I'd just love to. Yeah. Brilliant well I don't think we can uh, we can get any better than that so um, let's leave it there it's been an absolute delight to speak to you um, yeah terrific um, you know it's it's wonderful to hear the amount of people who uh, want to give back to what they've uh, you know, all of the support and collaboration and uh, cooperation that there is in Teesside is, is an utter delight. And um, I just, you know, just look forward to uh, <laughs> getting out there and seeing you in the real world at some point. Um, in the meantime, just, you know, uh, big up to you and uh, massive respect. And I look forward to seeing what you go on to achieve. Thank you so much. It's been lovely time. All right, this is a bit where I try and say goodbye. <laughs> Take care. You too.